Gracias por continuar con nosotros en este especial de Foro TV conversando con Silvia Air. Pero, ¿qué les diría usted específicamente a esta comunidad de pescadores de Cabo Pulmo, que bueno, ahora son prestadores de servicios ecoturísticos? Eh, ¿Y qué le diría a las autoridades de nuestro país que de repente son seducidas por, este, por estos megaproyectos en zonas como, como Cabo Pulmo? I would ask the people who live here, and I would ask the authorities who have the power right now to imagine facing the children 50 years from now, the children who might ask, why, why did you let this treasure be transformed into something that loses the the real value of this place. Or, those children might say, thank you, thank you for being so smart, for being wise, for realizing that what matters about this area is maintaining the health of the ocean, of keeping the reefs here the way they have been for thousands of years in the past and will continue to serve the people of this area as a source of renewal, as a source of, of health. It's easy to destroy it. I have seen places that I loved as a child destroyed. It's that perspective that I bring to what is here. It just seems inconceivable that we would let it be, be lost. Uh, I mean, I don't live here, but I feel very much alive when I come here. <laughs> This place restores my spirit. This place is a source of inspiration. And it can be forever for the people of Mexico and for people who come to Mexico as friends, who want to give back, who want to maintain the, the natural beauty, the natural wonder. The, this place has so much to give to the people here as long as we maintain the, the, the natural condition. But as soon as you start sort of chewing it up and placing large structures here, the water is, is not going to be the same. As soon as you start affecting the land nearby, and as soon as you start drawing large quantities of fresh water out of the ground to serve a luxury, a luxury kind of taste that it's not a need, it's a luxury. But the, you know, the real luxury is having the opportunity to be in a place like this. Cabo Bulo, this is, this is something that we need to maintain truly as a treasure and not lose it, not see it diminished. Después de tantos años eh, en investigación de los ecosistemas marinos, después de participar en eh, más de 400 expediciones, después eh, de tener eh, o realizar más de 7000 inmersiones, ¿se sigue sorprendiendo de lo que encuentra en el fondo del mar? Every time I go into the ocean, I am surprised by what I see. I always new things to see and you never know what you're going to find. I want everyone to have the opportunity to see a place like this, just so they understand why it matters that we, we take care of it. It's so easy to lose. Um, so, yes, I'm surprised. I worry. I worry about the response when you say, well, there isn't enough fresh water here to support a big hotel. And they say, oh, well, we'll just put a desal plant here. We'll take water from the sea, extract the salt, and have fresh water. No problem. Anybody who believes that a desalination plant has no impact should go and look at where these desal plants are placed. It has a huge impact. And you should not let that happen. You have a chance here. You have a chance to protect this area and work within the natural systems 
¿De dónde surgió esta idea de hacer Google Ocean eh, y cuáles han sido los, los, los resultados? I was at a conference in Spain in 2006. John Hankey, who's the head of the organization known as Google Earth, his company was acquired by Google. He was speaking at the same conference and was sitting right in the front row. And I had a chance to salute him and say how much I love Google Earth because you can hold the world in your hands. You can put it on your desktop or your laptop computer. Children, anyone, CEOs, government officials, you can turn it around, you can see how everything connects. You can visit your backyard and zoom in on your backyard. You can zoom in on your neighbor's backyard. You can go to New York or you can come to to a couple Puma. And then I said, but John, John Hankey, something's missing. The ocean. The ocean, it's just a big blob of blue. And I said, you should just call it Google Dirt, because you, for, the ocean is just neglected. You've done a great job with the land. I hope someday you'll finish Google Earth. He said it was like getting stabbed in the heart. But instead of being annoyed or mad, he invited me to come down to the Googleplex, to meet the Googlers, and to see what could be done to put the ocean in Google Earth. Three years later, it was launched in 2009. So now, a child, or a CEO, or a government official, or anybody can you know, turn the world around and dive in to places. And on Google Earth, on the ocean in Google Earth, these hope spots are being featured. The Gulf of California is one such hope spot because there's reason for hope. These places are still magnificent. And there's still a chance to find a way for us as human beings who take, take, take from the natural world to give back, to protect the systems that keep us alive. We have a chance, but the chance is sl sliding away. The next 10 years may be the most important in the next 10,000 years, because either we will make decisions that will protect places like Cabo Pulmo and the Gulf as a whole, or we will forever lose the chance to do so. Now is the time, and I really appreciate John Hankey and the Googlers for understanding how important it is to feature these places in the ocean, to give people hope that they can make a difference with their lives, with their voices. The, the, the people who have the political power, but people, individuals, have political power. The key is making your voice heard. It doesn't matter who you are, you have power. And it's the real key is using that power that you have to speak out, to, if you are an artist, use your art. If you write, use that power. If you are a child, tell the adults around you that you really want to protect these places that you can't put back once they're gone. Everyone has a chance. Teachers have a great opportunity because they're in contact with the youngsters just to value the natural world that keeps us alive. But everyone has that power. We just have to seriously use it while there's still time. Now we know that the ocean governs the way the world works. If we are to survive, not just just be here as something, but, but to thrive, if we are to have a prosperous future, we need to take care of the ocean that takes care of us. That's something that we did not know 50 years ago when I was a child. But children of today are learning, they are under understanding, because the knowledge that we gained so quickly about how the world works. We're at this critical crossroads where for the first time we understand and maybe for the last time we have the chance, the power to protect the natural systems that keep us alive. Well, muchas gracias por haber 
estado con nosotros en este programa especial conversando con Silvia Ert. Le agradecemos a esta eh, mujer de verdad excepcional y que sin duda su sola presencia aquí nos da un poco de esperanza en todos aquellos que están eh, tratando eh, de preservar los ecosistemas marinos o los ecosistemas en general. Gracias por su atención, nos vemos en la próxima.